Welcome to the Exponential Marketing Club, where we talk about everything content marketing, from just getting started with your business, to growing a captivating presence with your website and social media, and on to scaling with Facebook and Instagram advertising for exponential exposure and long-term success. Hi, my name is Sally Hendrick, your host and Exponential Marketing Strategist. Let's get started, y'all. All right, hey everybody, welcome to the Exponential Marketing Club. Today we're talking about marketing tools for your stage of business. This is really more for coaches and consultants, though it can apply to other people as well. Uh, we do have uh, mentors and solopreneurs and entrepreneurs and you know other types of mentors that can benefit from this discussion. It's all about marketing tools. And again, I've got a guest here. Her name is Sally Wadwa from the UK. And Sally, please tell us a little bit about you before I go into who I am. Hi everyone, uh, thank you for joining. I'm Sally Wadhwa, I'm an online tech strategist and tech educator. I basically help entrepreneurs and small business owners who want to learn a simplified approach to tech um, so they can serve their clients better with clarity, integrity and respect through learning about systems and sales funnels. Thank you. Excellent. Well, I'm so glad that you joined me today. We have batted back and forth a little bit here and there on Facebook, but we've never actually had any real discussions yet. So it's nice to finally have that happening. Um, unless we've been in some online meetings with other people. I just can't remember us actually having a one-to-one. A -one. So it's really great to have you here. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, no, likewise. I'm yeah. Glad. And the nice thing about the two of us is that we complement each other in the way that I really focus in on the content marketing that's going to really drive people to your business and to those discussions that you need to be having with them to grow those relationships. And then I have expertise in Facebook ads, very advanced, deep knowledge because I uh, was a statistician for 25 years for insurance purposes, for uh, actuarial science, and I found a love for digging into the data and reading the behaviors that come with those statistics and being able to tell the stories that come out of that. So welcome everybody and I know that we'll probably have people coming in um, as we go because I do have some emails that went out and so forth so uh, but without further ado why don't Sally you start talking about some of the tools that are your favorites before we get into categorizing which part of business therefore and hi Samantha oh she never mind bye Samantha <laughs> gosh I have um okay when it comes to discussing favorites in my head I start categorizing exactly what tools I use for for um which aspect of my business and that's how I can narrow down my favorites for you but stop me if I start to become overwhelming uh, because there are a collection of tools out there and um, when we think about what we need to do, the, um, the outcomes that our business needs, it's, we, can, we can find, I mean, there, it's, there's such vast choice out there, we can find a solution through a tech um, platform or an app. So the biggest actions I have in my business in regards to, um, say, our customer journey and the journey they follow from entering your business through a lead magnet um, I would say from there my favorite tools would be lead pages um, lead pages is a landing page platform it, it's just specifically for landing pages and um, we can use landing pages for various things so for instance um, to to, to, we can use them as a sales page we can use it as a sign up page for a lead magnet loads of things so when you when you are looking at creating lead um sorry landing pages you want to have something that looks pretty slick that can that has um information like straight to the point and that is aesthetically pleasing as you're scrolling down loads fast and has really good 
call to action buttons. So lead pages is fantastic for for that um, and very good if you don't have any coding background. If you're not really good at design because they have a um, special like templates you can use and there's a really good way to get online quickly even if you don't have a website. So it covers a lot of areas but lead pay it's paid um, however, it's still lower cost than hiring a, de- a developer or um, using someone to create a page off your website. I like that you mentioned lead pages because, excuse me, that was one of the things that I started with before I really knew what I wanted and what I was doing. And I did have a WordPress site, but I want to um, emphasize the fact that landing pages are meant to get people to take action forward. And a website that has like a home page or an about page and a contact page and all these other things that is kind of like your presence online and now there are ways to make it so when people come to your home page that you lead them into your landing pages to go forward and take action but if you're going to be running ads to something to get more people to sign up for something that you're doing You need to understand that landing pages are built a certain way. They typically do not have menu items on them. You don't want to have extra places for people to click that sends them away from the main objective of the page you're sending them to. And that's something that a lot of people really get confused about. They think, oh, I'm just going to run ads to my homepage. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You're not going to run ads to your homepage because your homepage is kind of like the uh what would you call it the reservoir that holds all of the links to the other types of content you have and it will send people to go searching around and nosing around your basic your online file folder as i like to call it as opposed to taking an action forward so if you're going to put money behind something and send people to a landing page that landing page needs to be optimized for people to take the one single action that you are paying for them to go and take or that you are you know asking them to take if you're doing some sort of you know marketing through your social media or something else like that it makes so much more sense um, for that but of course there are other advanced things that we could go into but I'm not going to go into that right now so um, when it comes to the let's say that you're starting out and you're doing the lead pages because I know that it is a lower cost tool so it's not something like click funnels or even Kajabi or something like that it is going to be something that somebody starting out can do and get a feel for and test a lot of different things more easily than if they were um, you know, once you have to have templates going in lead pages, it makes it easy for you to t- test multiple things so that you don't spend a lot of effort um, building out an entire system that doesn't work from the get go from the landing page, if you will. Now, with that, what other tools would you need to add on to lead pages to be able to finish out the job? You know, like email yeah. and other things. Give us a little bit more yeah, hint, so hints on that. Yeah, next step um, leads us to a email marketing platforms. Now, I have three that I recommend, and you will find this, Sally. With with whenever somebody asks me about about um, platforms, this the budget always comes into this. And I think no matter at what stage of your business, that's your your budget for how much you spend on your marketing or on your tech tools are very different. But it doesn't mean that you can't use these systems, that they, they can't be implemented. There is always a tool out there, and sometimes it will take searching to find something for your budget. So my three email marketing platforms I recommend are for someone that's just starting out, maybe only has one list, Um, one lead magnet and just really getting to learn about automation would be MailerLite. The reason being that it's, it it is free there. It's free up to a certain number of subscribers, but as you are a startup and you're you're getting started with online business, there's not really much that you need um, until you really start segmenting your audience, um, adding tags and go, going further down that email marketing journey. So MailerLite is my first recommendation. I've, I've heard of that. I've never used it, but I have heard of MailerLite. 
Yeah, it used to be um, Mail, MailChimp. Um, no, sorry, they're two different platforms. But the favourite used to be MailChimp, but then MailChimp um, added on that you made a restriction that you could only set up one list and you separate people by tags. However, at the beginning, tags, understanding tags, understanding definitions of, of sequences, of automation is just so much more for a startup to learn. Um, and when they're just starting out, they're really promoting themselves on social media more rather than leaning into email marketing. So yeah, um, that's why it's made a light now. So secondly, I would, uh, the second one is ConvertKit. Now ConvertKit, um, they, they just started a free version about 12 months ago, but, but they are a paid platform. It's about $29 per month, and it's brilliant for if you've got a few lists, you've got a, free, a few lead magnets out there, you're really into, you really need to start um, at this point of your business is start looking at, um, at your data. And your convert kit makes it really easy to analyze what emails are being opened, what clicks are happening within your emails. And um, you can set up a number of automations and they make their tagging system really simple. So for somebody who is probably a year in, has a number of lead magnets going out and really interested in, in actually starting to scale, starting to get out there more and really um, focus on email marketing as a audience building tool, I would recommend um, using ConvertKit. Now, at this point, if you're using ConvertKit, you're obviously spending a little bit more money. One of the things that I did, I started out with MailChimp and then I moved into ConvertKit. And because I am rather techy on you know my end of the business, that was kind of how I started in the business. But what I did was I actually offered training to people who were using MailChimp. I told them the advantages of moving to ConvertKit and I taught them how to convert their lists over. I did like a three or four week series and I ended up getting about 10 affiliates that way. And so I've been making money for the last four years just on people who came to those particular um, sessions that I hosted. Uh, so here's, that's something that I don't know if you've ever thought about doing this, Sally, but if you wanted to, let's say, help your clients uh, build their list so that your commission on ConvertKit would grow, you could help your clients who may not be as tech savvy to actually go through and teach them how to convert their lists over or how to get started with something like that um, so that you can have your tool get paid for. And, and anybody could do it, which is a really great way of making, you know, some money right out of the gate that as long as people are growing their businesses and they keep the software, you're going to continue to get that commission all the time. I don't have a ton of commission coming to me every month, but it is about $200 every month for the last four or five years. And so I would say that's nothing to sneeze at. You know, I don't want to give it up. <laughs> Yeah, there are, I mean, a lot of these tech pl um, online platforms do offer affiliates and they, I mean, each each platform, may, you need to have different requirements in order to join their program, but ConvertKit, they make it very easy. It's like, if you use us and you love us, recommend us and we'll reward you. Yeah, exactly. And I think you get like 30% of the price as commission so that's it's pretty pretty nice and you get it forever as long as those people keep paying for it so i wanted to bring alex and steve up if you want to if you have questions or anything i'm going to invite you to come up and tell us what software you're using like what stage of business you're in and um and then we can start speaking towards towards that end because i think we all use different software so um i would love to hear from you now alex i know you use kajabi because i use kajabi yes. and i have a feeling that you probably found me through some sort of kajabi connection because exactly. i've been active over there for several years and it's interesting because you know i i have been looking at both in uh, MailerLite and ConvertKit 
and was actually going to start with mail light because it is less expensive but now that i know that convert kit has a free version i'll look to see what the numbers are in that and but uh i watched a video i don't i don't remember um i think it was graham graham cochran and he was talking about in kajabi learning how to use the tagging system in kajabi and then also apparently in the last couple of months kajabi has put a little bit more effort into their contacts kind of looking at it more like a crm and so uh, you know it's like do i do i do tagging in both you know kajabi and up on convert or do i just get a convert kit and rely on that or do i stick with my kajabi uh tags and do my best until i grow out of it well what is it that you're doing in kajabi is there something that you're wanting to do in kajabi that it, kajabi can't handle because i i don't use anything except kajabi yeah okay well that's good to hear um no i i just need i think the main thing is I just need to learn more about it. Um, I, I find tags and triggers, those kinds of webhook thingies. <laughs> I'm talking like a non-tag because I'm non-tag. But um, I find it very confusing because like if in Kajabi, if I just want to email three people that recently came in and you know came from facebook and was in this group and this group has been talking about a particular subject and i know they came into my training because of that i'd like to segment them out and just do a special email to them but i don't know how to do that yet well here's the thing if you add in another piece of software to kajabi for something like that that kajabi already does you are adding another layer of complication in the tech so you're going to have to tag them no matter what, no matter which list they come into, whether it's ConvertKit or Kajabi. The difference is, is that, oh. yeah, it's not that ConvertKit does it better so much. It's just that you're missing an opportunity in Kajabi that you could fix on the front end. So whenever you go in, just to go, I don't want to go too deep into tech on this, but anytime you're using a, an email program and you have a form that people are going to fill out so that they end up on your list you use that form as the the starting point and you add the automation to tag them inside that form and that's where you would put the tag like Facebook group or whatever it was that you put out there to get people in and that will help you indicate who it was now if you have to go back and backtrack because you didn't set it up to begin with that's okay go get it set up for the next time and then go find the three individual people and tag them manually with that new tag that you've added to that intake form where people are coming in Yes, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Thanks for clearing that up. That's very helpful. Sure thing. Hello, Sally's. Hello, Alex. Hey, Steve. Oh, yeah. Hi, Steve. Tell us who you are. What do you do, and and what have you got a question around? Yeah, so I, I work in the um, healthcare field as a cognitive hypnotherapist, and I largely see people who've got um, issues that are stopping them from making progress in their careers, uh, which is a special interest of mine. And I'm based in West London, not a million miles away from Sally Wadawa. Um, and uh, lovely to see you all on the call today. Um, I'm really enthusiastic about MailerLite and the other one I, I find just incredible is Book Like a Boss. So I'm probably gonna say things now which give a sense of, you know, working on a small scale. So I'm seeing clients on a one-to-one -one basis and the two words which are really resonating for me in terms of what I think I need to do this year and moving forward is, is increase visibility and then basically find out where my ideal clients hang out as well. And they would be largely women in the workplace who feel stuck with their careers of not being good enough, um, kind of typical imposter syndrome, even though I tend to avoid using that label. Um, and where I am at the moment, I'm, I'm kind of, I've got a list in front of me. There's five buckets. I've got a, um, an email course via MailerLite in development. 
I've got a webinar under my belt recently and I'm looking to do some more. And I'm also trying to build a community on Facebook, um, in a Facebook group, which again is all around um, helping people to be happy with, with, with who they are and be more authentic, etc. I'm also thinking of doing a, a Facebook group course. So my self-diagnosis from just talking to you and hearing myself talk is focus and um, I, I'm quite a techie, I'm a techie in terms of enthusiastic, I wouldn't say I'm a techie um, in terms of competence, but um, yeah, I'm, I go back to your point, Sally, Sally Hendrick, the, the kind of thing around the, lead, uh, the, the landing pages, which I think I could tighten up a bit is around the call to action. So I'm, I'm using the MailerLite um, sites, which are the, the landing pages within MailerLite. Never used lead pages, Sally, W. Um, but yeah, MailerLite seems to be like a really, really good one-stop shop. Um, but I guess it's, it's a uh, focus for me and, and really finding where am I, go how am I going to get to where I need to be in as short a time as possible. So let me, let me ask you, Steve, what is it that you, your clients are going to achieve once they work with you? So they'll, they'll have a, a greater level of belief in themselves. They'll, they'll have more self-confidence. Um, and I, I tend to frame things in the, in the positive rather than in terms of what they lose. So they'll, they'll be seeing themselves as, as better than they, they truly see themselves currently. Um, they'll, they'll be able to take positive steps in their life, overcoming some of the emotions associated with not feeling good enough, that kind of anxiety, etc. <clears throat> okay, and so you're talking about people who are, are women in the workplace and yeah. that's going to be obviously a lot of women so uh finding groups of women who are already you know communicating on some sort of level is going to be key to try to infiltrate into obviously if they would allow the men in which i think that they would uh <laughs> usually they do point, it? it's, you know especially in the context of what we're faced with in the uk at the moment um but you know, it, 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 it's global, isn't it? The, the, the fact that women have to be seen as four, four times better than a man to be considered as equal, which is horrific. Um, but the, yeah. Yes, uh, yes. And, and so, so speaking yeah. around that is very important because that's going to draw people in on the emotional side of it. And then turning that around into the positive is going to be a key as well. So if, if you were talking, you mentioned about doing some sort of Facebook course. Are you talking about having a group that's like a social learning group that has the learning units in it that people can yes. follow along? Yes, absolutely. And I, I, my initial attempt at that was to go for a, um, a longer duration, maybe of, over the course of a month, which I think I've since realised is, is is quite a big ask when, when you're in the testing phase. Maybe maybe talking in terms of a week or so. Yeah, when you're first getting started, one of the things that uh, people like to do is they, they put these tips and tricks out there online. They, they start those conversations. They start building up a, a little rapport with people, and then those people start coming back to you. And so they're following you through social media. Maybe you are even coming in as a guest speaker on other groups, which can be really helpful. Go find people who have the same audience that you're looking for, but they do something entirely different. But this would be a nice like oh we've got special guest Steve coming in to talk to us about this that and the other and the other thing you can do is um, to you can do like one-off workshops you could do to a two-hour thing you could do a webinar you could do a five-day challenge going much beyond that in the testing phase can be a little bit scary hairy you know hairy scary if you will because you're starting to put a lot of effort and resources into something that you're unsure if it's going to work yes absolutely and don't be afraid to charge for a workshop 
you know, you can charge a very nominal fee to get people in. You can charge $7 to get people into a webinar and then, you know, say you'll get the replay forever. And that sort of thing can be um, a lot better. It, it, yes, it would cost you money, you know, more money and effort to get people in there. But when you get somebody to give you even $1, they're like 16 times more likely to buy from you in the future. Hello, Susan. If you want to come up and say hello, we're talking about marketing tools and love to have you come up. We're a small group. I think that brings us like nicely into a little conversation around um, your client journey. Um, and when you are, and Sally's completely right, when you are selling some, when someone's coming into your business through purchasing something, no matter how small it is, um, they become a warm audience, they become easier to nurture, they become easy to communicate with because they've purchased to actually to actually hear from you, which helps bring that build up that trust and getting to know you and the way that you teach the very, very easily rather than um, constantly going out to cold audiences. I think with our with our um, marketing focus, it, it it should be on the cold audience and also our equally putting an effort into our warm audience, being our past clients, people who've who've spent money on us and a low cost, maybe people um, who've been who've who've already been in our workshops and so on. They're, they're too bits of marketing streams that need to go in hand in hand and your business works with both of them yes exactly steve anything else you want to ask about or you know do you thank thank you both for that that, that was fantastic I've, I've made scribbles here which is um always a good sign for me that i'm picking up some real nuggets so that, that's that's great um sally you just talked about the cold audience and um you know, working the groups that I'm already part of, the network groups, etc., Facebook, elsewhere. Um, the challenge I'm really finding is when, I'm, when I've tried to go to the cold audience via Facebook, the very mention of anything to do with healthcare, when I boost the post, if I make a post which I boost um, and pay for the boost, I'm not sure if that... Is, uh, clear to you what that is. Let me caution you about boosting. Don't boost unless you know exactly what you're doing on the back end of Facebook. It is right, not. Okay, that, I think you yeah. answered the question then. Yeah, it's not going to help. Also, you have to be very careful what you talk about in your copy. Um, you are not allowed to advertise anything necessarily around medical or health care. You have to be careful in yes. the way that you word things, and um, that's going to take. That takes experience and take, takes knowing what you can and what you can't say. You can read the Facebook policies to see what's allowed and what's not allowed, but it, it, you don't really understand until you go through the pains of having things rejected. Well, policies already, Sally, and um, to, to both Sally's, I'd be really interested to know if you, if you were going to a cold audience on Facebook, um, as we're on, the, on that platform at the moment talking about that platform how would you go about um reaching out cold avoiding boosting well it's not that i'm saying avoiding boosting i would say that if you're going to run ads you need to get inside the system itself to run ads because in, when you get into the business manager there's a lot of technical things to do first and you can choose your audiences more carefully you can um, also uh, choose the right objectives to reach the right people your um, your audience construction just to give you an idea can be so much more dialed in and advantageous to people who are going to actually take action towards what you're doing um, it is impossible to, to choose the objectives to get people to sign up for something when you do it from the boosting side of things. The option is not even there to choose the right objective for that. Um, now, as far as like building up audiences on online, 
you can run ads for like a dollar a day for just getting engagement on your tips posts, just growing people who see you all the time and start interacting with you. And then when you're ready to pitch something that they actually take action towards, you go into the ads manager and you can run ads to them to convert them into a webinar or into a challenge or something like that. It's a lot more complicated than people really think. Facebook makes it look so easy. They give you that pretty little blue button and say, touch me. And, and it's like, they're really just opening their pocket and saying, put money into it. And you're losing the money as if you toss pennies in the ocean. So it just makes it really difficult unless you understand how to take it to that next level. So I really think that it's more important to figure out, well, what is the content that you're gonna be putting out there? What is it that you're going to be, how are you gonna connect with people, not just on the level of what you do for your business, but on some sort of personal interest level as well, because that really helps solidify those relationships. People like you when you have similar content or common interest, if you will. Um, so there's just lots of lots of different things that you can go into. Um, I am going to be, just so you know, Steve and Susan and Kimberly, I'll get to you in a second. Um, I am recording this, and so it will be in a video with it's not us talking but it's it will be on an audio and it will have a transcript of this exact talk so you'll be able to go back to those notes and um and so i want to welcome you to do that you can uh, head over to my instagram now if you want and p to send me a, a direct message on my instagram you, if you just go in my profile scroll until you find my instagram or get on my list or whatever you're going to end up being able to get notified that this is ready and available um now before i move on steve did you have anything else you wanted to add real quick before i say hello to susan and kimberly no, not, nothing at all, thank you. Just to say thank you both to the two Sallys. And um, yeah, I, I, the, the one bit that's missing for me still is, is the how, how, how to um, uh, choose that audience in, in Facebook. Yeah. But um, I totally hear what you're saying. I'll, Just I'll pick up with you. message me. I'll send you a blog post on how to do that. Um, I've got one on my blog and I've got a lot of great information. And if you wanted to move forward, uh, we'll just talk from there, okay? Fantastic. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Steve. I'm so glad you got to come. All right, Susan, hey, you popped up here next. How are you? I am well. I am well. I, uh, whenever I see marketing tools for your stage of business, for coaches, I go, right. Well, this is my jam. So it's, um, it's all about this going online. That's what I find really tricky. So um, the thing is, I have lots and lots and lots of knowledge. I'm a careers advisor. I, I talk, I teach, I, I kind of, you know, I'm in the moment. And suddenly I've got to try and contact people on all these different social media platforms using technology that's like, what I'm saying now? And so uh, I think the thing for me is, and one of the other tricky things for me is that my, you know, client, the person, pardon me, I'm trying to target our parents. So sadly, it's not really obvious for all parents click here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I feel like I'm coming at this from lots and lots of different ways. And, um, you know, I just get really overwhelmed with the technology. When I started, I had a nice idea that, you know, I really wanted parents and teenagers to get the best careers advice when the world was closing down. And I thought they need this information more than ever. So. I don't know, I'm just, I'm sort of joined the room, but I, I, I'm just sort of really keen to hear people's advice about how to target parents per se, but I think also I'm, I'm keen to kind of understand um, what what is going to make a post stand out, you know, like it, it, I go to all the effort to try and do something and I just, you know, it's a you always feel a bit ugh because like only sort of five people like it so I can't, I'm like really really do I have to is it worth it so A pet talk please ladies and B um, any advice on targeting parents thank you <laughs> well thank you so much for um, telling us a little bit about what you're doing and what you're struggling with um, first of all are you talking about like 
you're just your plain social media posts, like on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. What is it that you're talking about? So I'm talking about Facebook and Instagram. I do okay on Facebook. I'm trying to build my audience on Instagram. And I'm also trying to work on Twitter and LinkedIn. So, you know, I, 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 um, I can repurpose posts to LinkedIn and Twitter because I just post the same thing again. Mm-hmm. But again, what is what is interesting content on Facebook, on Instagram? What works? What gets people stopping? Honestly, it is being authentic, I think. Obviously, sharing tips and tricks, but also sharing your personality. I think it's, I think our personalities are very powerful, and I think that sometimes we tend to be afraid to show that, and we like to hide behind logos and uh, logos and, and our expertise. But people are on social media to be social, and social connecting and networking. Uh, works the best even when it comes to the people who were doing the most expensive ads in the world I will tell you that the overly produced videos versus the social right out of your pocket uh, videos the ones that are the genuine person connecting with their audience perform 10 to 100 times better as far as how many people re- are reached and interact with the, the post and actually take action forward on it because they're looking for real people, not bots and not TV commercials. So and that's... Does that include finger pointing, Sally? <laughs> I, keep, I keep seeing all this finger pointing on Instagram. Does it actually work? You know, when people sort of pop up against the music and go, hey, and they pop to all this information, like, I don't know... Right, so I've got, I love that. Sociable, connecting, authentic. What gimmicks work? What's going to get me people stop scrolling and look at my stuff? Well, the thing is, is that consistency is key. Finding a place where your content is starting to resonate because you, you do have people showing up and starting to follow you. And then connecting with them. If you are connecting with people authentically in the private messages or in the comments below, that's also going to help because it triggers, they're, they're like, hey, she's paying attention to me or, um, hey, she answered my question. Now, it depends on what platform you're really wanting to engage on. That's where I would focus. So if you want to engage on Instagram, then focus on Instagram. If you really want to engage on Twitter, then you need to personally be engaging with these people on Twitter just pushing your stuff out there to the world without adding the engagement component to it is not going to work to get people to take that next step with you so that's where you've got to focus instead of worrying about let me be everywhere figure out where you want to be and go deeper into it wow it sounds really brilliant when you say it that sounds really brilliant yes yes engage engage personally Yes, engage personally. I mean, there's ways, there's tricks to learn. And when you're engaging with people authentically and you're not sounding like a robot, people will take notice of that. Even if they don't answer right away. People are shy. People are funny. It's okay. And don't worry about that sort of thing. Just get in there and have those genuine conversations without uh, word vomiting your business all over them. (laughs) Save that for your profile. For your posts, for your reels, for your IGTV stuff. Be personal in there, but then save your business stuff for for when they're ready to go check you out. You be ready for them. That's where you're going to have the most success. Now, as far as like tools go, we didn't really get into what tools you're using at this point, Susan. But I do want to let you know that Sally Wadwa above me is very much uh, knowledgeable about lots of tools that you can use depending on the stage of business you're in and then Kimberly who's right beside you in this room she's also a tool techie tool gal and I want to say hey Kimberly thanks for coming in you were you were always around and I love it hey Sally well I'm always interested in being in the room you're in um everybody who's never met Sally before she's an absolute genius um especially with Facebook ads and just you know marketing in general so like you definitely want to follow her on social media and hang out with Sally can you see my blushing up here 
her advice is gold. <laughs> but yeah, like I agree. Yeah, it's blushing. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't worry about being everywhere. Like you say, you're already on Facebook and Instagram. So like, go crazy on Facebook and Instagram. Talk to people. Go live. Um, all the like video is really um, king right now. So go live. Um, and uh, there's, yeah, I don't know, you know, what you're using it, but uh, there's so many tools to help you do everything more easily. It doesn't have to be hard. And, and I love, like Selk said, I love tech. Um, so hi, I'm Kimberly. I am a certified online business manager and I'm a tech addict and uh, love, love hooking up people's tech and getting their, you know, all their processes automated and everything. Yes, I can attest. Kimberly is a tech addict. So is Sally. And I am too, but I have to say that after a while, I got to where I couldn't teach the creative side and the advertising and the strategy side and also the tech and so on and so forth. And I ended up moving towards Kajabi, which is a little more expensive when you first look at it. But because it's an all-in-one system, it eliminates a lot of the headaches of having to integrate various pieces of software together. And once you kind of understand the whole email sign up process and the tagging system and how to make the pages, you know, line up on your website, it really makes a big difference. So um, that's just my favorite, but any, you know, I work with people who use all kinds of tools. So it's all, it's all doable, it's all available, but I think that it's, important for you not to be afraid of the tools that you get and get into uh, get in there and figure out what they can do and what the capacity is and don't be afraid you're going to break it you can always undo things and there's always a help desk somewhere and there's always a person that can help you like sally or kimberly who's going to pull you out of that hole of making you feel inferior uh, just don't be afraid of it um it's in when you you'll outgrow tools as well and so so I was going to ask. Yeah. About, um, the best tools for posting on 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 social media. Do you you know Do you recommend Sally? I, I don't know or Kimberly, but do you recommend a particular like just later or is it? What's the best tool for kind of setting myself up? Really easy tech tool. Well, it depends on the. Go ahead, Sally. You answer that question. Yeah. What platforms are you mostly on? at the moment what's the main focus that you have I, I feel like I'm doing okay on Facebook so I post on Facebook because I understand it probably the best and I'm really trying with Insta and I know they're sort of connected but I, I feel like I do Facebook and then Insta's the afterthought when I want to actually focus on Instagram because I feel like I've got left behind with that so Insta's my main one I'd say yeah, there are, for Insta, so I'm currently testing out um, Instagram platforms at the moment, so I'm kind of in between my scheduling. So I am currently using Tailwind for Instagram. So I use Tailwind for Pinterest and absolutely love it. Um, and I thought they they released um, Tailwind for Instagram and there was a special offer, so I thought I'll purchase it and, and give it a go so I can recommend it to people. And um, they have a, a, a program that actually selects tags for you, so, sorry, hashtags, depending on the content of the caption. And um, that was the main selling point for me, but it's not been that great. Um, so otherwise, the best thing about the other good, one good thing about Tailwind is that it's easy to navigate and it also schedules stories. Um, so if you're into using your stories, you can um, you can create temp use your templates and create ones that will go out on certain days. The other one is Planoly that um, I've tested and I do like. Um, so that one is it's really really easy to navigate the price point is um is much better than than tailwind and you can you, it's you can see your grid view um mm -hmm. and and if it's suggesting for that one as you're just getting getting into things um that might be a good one for you to use i agree with you there i use Planoly myself 
Uh, Sally, thank you for mentioning that. I also use Tailwind because I've, I've hired someone to do my Pinterest for me and they use Tailwind. But as far as Instagram goes, I schedule everything on Planoly. I've got everything scheduled out through the end of April. Um, it also, when you pay, you can do a free part of it, but you can also upgrade so that it, it will post out to Facebook and Twitter for you as well. Um, though the Twitter combination for some reason hasn't been working lately, but I don't really use Twitter that much. I just kind of use it as a, hey, I'm there, but I don't really interact with people over there, so I'm not worried. Um, but there's so many different tools and it does really matter as to where you want to focus your attention on which social media platform before you choose the tools. So um, what we what Sally just said about Tailwind and Planoly is good. And then also Later, I've heard good things about Later, though I don't know anything about it. I love using contentstudio.io for uh, posting. Uh, it's for Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, pretty much all of all of them. <laughs> and um, it can evergreen your post so that if you're a blogger, you can um, set up your post to go out every you know week or whatever in, in a in a cycle like uh, for me Edgar and everything. So it does everything that most people get two or three tools to do in one and so it's much less expensive um, and uh, yeah I use it for my content for myself so I just like to plug them too. <laughs> nice so contentstudio.io it's another thing to look at and something else I've looked at before is recur post um, that's something I've used it's very similar to smarter Q um, I don't remember the price levels on those but I've just gotten to the point lately where I really focus mostly on Instagram and Facebook, and so that's where I am uh, with Planoly. So about any other tools, does anybody want to talk about more advanced tools, like for your website, for your blog, for, um, for your pipelines or funnels, if you will? If anybody has any questions around that, um, we can go in that direction or whatever. I just had one question for Kimberly. Is... I've been working with some of these social media uh, management tools and what I have found is that it's, you know, to post on your actual page, it's okay, but to post in the groups, that's where I get, uh, the, the groups I get confused. So like with Facebook, you can't automatically post to a group. You have to, ma I think you have to manually do that. Actually, that's for, if, it, if you're the administrator of that group, you can schedule your post into your own group. If someone else administers a group, you have to have permission. Um, you would have to be an administrator of that group and have permission to schedule something like that. Oh. If, yeah. Yeah, that's what's so hard because, like, with, uh, I have a lot of uh, inventor groups that I'm a member of. Uh, you know, just go in there and post. I can post stuff, but to put it on a scheduler, that's where they, where the tricky part is. So it, I have to manually push it from my page to the group. Yeah, but the thing is, is that when you do scheduled post into a group and you're not the administrator of it, your posts will look spammy. And if your posts look spammy, the people will start to ignore that. Okay. Okay, thank yeah, you. I would was... say don't do that. Like, whenever you have a blog post, don't just automatically go around to a whole bunch of groups and post it. <clears throat> People are going to ignore it, and then you'll probably get banished. <laughs> oh, wow, okay. Good, so good to know. So if you want to start a conversation that happens to include what you wrote about in your blog post, that's a really great way to engage in groups. Okay. So, um, you know. If Sally was posting about Facebook ads, just to use a really basic idea, um, she could post, hey, who in here is using Facebook ads or something like that? Or um, I just started doing Facebook ads, you know, what are your best tips or whatever? And then you could share yours as well. Or, you know, you could, sh if they're asking questions, you could share your blog post in the comments. If okay. that group allows links, a lot of groups don't even allow links now. So you could say, like if you were giving good advice or talking about really good things, they would 
look you up and make sure make sure that you have at the top of your profile um, a link to your website yes so that when they look at who is this lady because she's you know this is great advice okay they can go to your profile and, look, and go right to your website yes so that's how that's how you that's how you talk in groups and get actual people reaching out to you because yeah just spamming the links doesn't work yeah, okay, I will tell you that like in the Kajabi group, people will ask questions around Facebook ads. And so I will go and I will look at the other answers people are giving, which usually people will be kind of vague with their answers. And so what I'll do is I'll be like, well, here's some of the things that you may want to consider like A, B, C, D. And you know, and it's like really good advice that advances them as opposed to just barely answering the question. And sometimes I'll even put a blog post there that's from my academy website in which people don't necessarily tie me to that website. I'll say something like, this blog post right here really demonstrates this better than I'm saying it in this comment. Right. And <laughs> you wouldn't believe how many people I've had sign up for a call with me because of stuff like that. I don't even post or even answer questions much in that Kajabi group anymore because when people search and find things, they'll see my big thick answer in the middle of the comments with a link and then boom, next thing I know, they're booked on my calendar. Yeah, actually that worked for me the other day. I got a brand new client just commenting on somebody's, uh, just helping somebody with some advice. And then all of a sudden she contacted me. She says, can we set up a call? Boom, I have a new client, it's amazing. Exactly. And it's beautiful to do that. And the nice thing, here's some a little trick, a little techie trick that you can take with you. Um, if, you're, if you go into the search bar on Facebook and you type in some of the keywords of things that you can answer questions around, you will find where people ask questions in the groups that you're already in or from the friends you already have. And you will be able to see what they've posted and then you can go and add your answer to it. And you won't necessarily have to go searching for it inside a group through the posts. You're literally putting your keywords in the search bar and Facebook is bringing you back all the things that you could potentially go comment on. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, this also takes us to um, what Steve was mentioning earlier in regards to having his own Facebook group to grow. But going into groups that are already established and using that keyword search, the search tool um, to find posts and find out what people are talking about and then commenting there um, isn't necessarily another way to grow a group, but it's a way to actually grow your audience and pe people to find out about you. Click on your, your profile to then look at your details and your groups advertised on your own profile. Exactly. So if you've already got your Facebook business page ready to go, it's tagged on your personal profile so that people will click and get over to your business page. And then your business page has a call to action to join a group or to visit a, a landing page on your website. If you're ready to, to take people in, then going out and answering those questions just makes that so much easier for people to find you when they go, oh, Alex sure is a sharp lady. I really want to know what she's doing or Steve's got some great information or hey Susan thanks for this or Kimberly has got oh wow I love that tool she talked about I'm gonna go find her now just make yourself easily findable and make it so it's easy for people to click around and find uh, information from you so that they will first of all I like to say they're gonna if they ever touch your website or they ever touch your Instagram or your Facebook business page I've captured them in my little snare because I have tracking on my website and Facebook and Instagram already track the people who come to our stuff. And because I run ads, I go and create audiences out of those people who already interacted with my content. And then I can send out um, something a little juicier for them to go click on and sign up for. The 
Yeah, there needs to... This is all um, bigger box thinking. And it's the way that as business owners, we need to think about when when we're putting ourselves out there, when we're trying to market our business. I know this moves a little aside from, from tools, but it's all about our customer journey and how they how they enter our our business and then how we retarget them, make the most of the of those clicks of that data that we're reading, that we're seeing, um, and and getting them to, to you know, guiding them where to go. We need to make we can make it very obvious for them by by using tracking, by by um by looking at again our email open rates, what kind of content are they most are they most looking for at that time? Because ultimately we want to make sure what we are selling when we do do our call to actions that direct to a product of ours is something that they need at that very moment. Is something that that's on their mind there and then. And it's our tools and and the the systems we put in in place that help us do these things more easily. Um, and for anyone who is who, who hasn't actually got their their lead magnet a landing or isn't using a landing page to grab an email address um, that should really really be your first your first action because it also helps you when people are looking up at what you're doing that you have some way to catch them through email because then that's continuous nurturing that's a, a platform and not necessarily a platform, but that's a list that you own. You're not relying on algorithms and people seeing your posts. You're not you're not relying on um, on how many people are entering your Facebook group or, or, or those audiences. This is an entirely separate audience that you can build that you have more control over. Yes, but also I don't want you to get overwhelmed because you know first step is your social profiles need to be filled out all the way so that people know exactly what you do, who you serve, and and show your personality and your branding, you know, your colors and your, your style, and keep that consistent everywhere. And when you do, then they recognize you over and over again. And then that lead magnet, so if they're wanting to leave the social platform and come to you, to your website, to your email uh, subscription list, then that is that next more intimate step towards you. So just know that you don't have to have all the bells and whistles put together right away. Just, Just make it easy for people to find you and you will start to figure out, oh, this is starting to get really cumbersome. I'm getting a lot of messages on my Instagram and I need to be able to get these people somewhere else and I need them to see my newsletter. I need them to read the blog post that I wrote or whatever that may be. And that's when you start growing into the more automated things and start using more tools to make it easier. And um, and that's, that's what makes this really really good and in the beginning it feels so overwhelming but just know that you just get your profile set up and don't be afraid to be yourself and um and move people in towards you whether it's through the groups or through a call or through messaging just get started all right well let's let's go ahead and wrap this up it feel free to go to sallyhendrick.com and take take some pathways over or go to the instagram and message and say you're ready to see some of uh, the things that we've got and let's have that next conversation okay i love that you're both called sally the two sallies is brilliant. <laughs> yes we, we should have a little show right the sally and sally I'll be I love that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Everybody else, lovely to meet you all. It's been really great. Thank, Thank you so, so much. much. So much value. I loved it. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, been great. Thank great. You. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you all very much. It was very entertaining. Awesome. You. See you next time. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening today. Now head over to sallyhendrick.com forward slash clubhouse to participate in our live and recorded events. Thanks for being here.